بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Salah and dhikr are linked together in the Holy Quran and in the Hadith and order of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran that verily the Salah forbids the one who performs it correctly from indecency and injustice and wrongdoing. Allah Almighty says, and the remembrance of Allah Almighty is bigger. Immediately after mentioning the Salah and its benefit, he mentions the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the effect of the remembrance of Allah Almighty. In the other place, Allah Almighty makes it an order. And when you have completed your prayers, then remember Allah Almighty. And it was the sunnah and guidance of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after every salah to make some forms of dhikr and supplications. We'll speak very briefly about them and why they are there and some of their benefits. The first one that is narrated by Thawbar radiallahu an, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa as soon as he finishes the salah, he will say Astaghfirullah thrice, three times. And this is one of the surprising form of dhikr. You have just finished the ibadah, a good deed, a pillar in Islam. Why would you say Astaghfirullah, which is usually said after sins and wrongdoings? There are two things. The first one is because no matter how good your salah was, it is not up to the grandeur of Allah Almighty and the majesty of Allah Almighty. In our life, this is similar to giving a gift. You buy a gift and you give it to an extremely wealthy person, friend of yours, or a ruler. What do you say with it? You give it to him with an apology, isn't it? <coughs> You deserve much bigger than that, and you are much bigger than that, but this is what I could afford. This is similar to that. So this is my salah, so I seek your forgiveness if it is not up to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you. The second thing, the benefit of a salah is according to how much concentration and khushu' you had in it. And no matter how good that salah might be, sometimes you have some thoughts here and there, so you have some waswasa from shaitan and so on, you are diverted away from the salah, so it's not perfect. So that is why you say, Astaghfirullah, for any mistakes that might have happened in that salah. And thus, you seek forgiveness from Allah Almighty and you make a promise to yourself and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then next salah I'm going to make a better one. You continue to do that. The next remembrance that is mentioned is a form of glorification to Allah Almighty. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to say, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dal jalali wal ikram. There are two parts in it. The first one is glorifying Allah Almighty with one of the greatest names of Allah Almighty. As salam, peace, the peace. Oh Allah Almighty, you are the peace. And peace comes from you. Peace is one of the essential things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us in this world and in the hereafter. And in fact, Allah Almighty named the Jannah the house of peace or the place of peace. Sorry. Darus Salam. There is some of the capitals in the Islamic history, throughout the Islamic history, they named it Darus Salam. The place of peace. It was none. Muslims throughout history were peaceful people. And Alhamdulillah, they still are. And they will continue to do so. Because it is the order of Allah Almighty. We might have some crazy people, extreme minorities. They do not represent except themselves. But for Islam, as an essential thing, it is. The, the, the motto of Islam is Islam. And the greeting of Islam is As-Salam. And whenever you enter the, your house or a masjid or a place, you start with salam Whenever you leave, you say the same thing and so on. So that is why here, after the salah, you also remind yourself of this important dua. Important dua. Supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the name of peace. Why would 
the Messenger وسلم, choose this name out of all the beautiful names of Allah Almighty because of this reason the Salah gives you peace inside don't you feel that? how do you feel? after leaving the Salah totally different feel it inside and it gives you peace in your interactions after the Salah Allah Almighty said verily the Salah forbade the one who performs it from injustice and wrongdoing and indecency and so on so it affects you you should be a peaceful person and a just person you have just finished the prayer how is that? this is by understanding the correct meaning of Salah you are standing humbly in front of Allah Almighty and you know that Allah Almighty is the peace and the just and he does not accept injustice or wrongdoings isn't it? how could any person who has just performed the Salah leaves the masjid and do something of an injustice or wrongdoing he will not so that is the concept it doesn't mean that anyone who prays he is not going to commit injustice or wrongdoing no that is not the mistake the correct the, sal the correct salah should prevent the person who performs it from these actions he should realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there and should avoid these things how are you going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shortly after the next salah what are you going to say to him? I've just finished my first ibadah with you and I left and I did the exact opposite of what you want? Doesn't make sense. So that is a reminder to the Muslim on and off all the time. The next part after that is a glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tabarak ya al jalali wal ikram. Tabarak is a beautiful name. The idea of Tabarak is that he is glorified above any similarities between him and his creation in any of his characteristics or actions or dealing nothing nothing like unto him so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing but he does not need a hearing aid like you or an ear or an instrument or an organ not like that it's not like you or a place or a field that doesn't apply to him so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above glorified above his creation furthermore he has lots and lots of glorified attributes and perfect attributes so this is the meaning of tabarak one single word that needs an explanation in this regard that is the concept of tabarak so after mentioning tabarak he mentioned two other beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala usually mentioned together you rarely hear one of them alone they're mentioned together Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram is mentioned as one beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it contains two different attributes the first one Ya Dha Ya Dha O the one who has or possess or the one attributed with that is the Al Jalal glory and perfection Al Ikram generosity understand what is the link between them so glory understand generosity uh, so it's at the same time this is a glorification to Allah Almighty and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indirectly oh, Allah Almighty you are the most generous you are the one who is attributed with generosity okay then what that's it so you know does he know and that is why one of the guidance of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to specifically link yourself with these or this beautiful name. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to keep on tight and hold on tight to Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram and increase saying it. Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram, Ya Dhal Jalali. If you need something from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and you don't know how to ask, it is enough for you to say Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram, Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram, Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram. Why? Because it contains both glorification to Allah Almighty and indirectly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Dal Jalali wa Ikram. Beautiful. So that is why the Messenger Sallallahu told us to say it after every salah. Next after that is a beautiful conversation between the person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, it's an indirect one, but it summarizes this whole life. The concept of this world. Oh Allah Almighty. There is none who can prevent whatever you give. And none who can give whatever you prevent. Oh. Don't tire yourself. 
Don't overwork yourself. Don't overthink. Don't worry too much. Do not have any anxiety. If something is meant for you, it's going to come to you regardless of whatever might happen. If something is not meant for you, it's not going to happen no matter what. That is why actually the Messiah Sallallahu in his beautiful guidance, he said, fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and seek sustenance in a beautiful and gentle way. Seek rizq in a beautiful and gentle way. Don't worry, because it's coming to you. In the other narration, the rizq, your rizq, seeks you itself. It is running after you, like death is seeking you. Can you say, well, if I do this and that? No, it is going to come to you, so don't worry. It doesn't mean don't do anything. That is why in the guide of the Prophet says, say, seek, but in a gentle manner. And why this is important, this reminder after every salah? Because sadly, most people are delusioned by this world. Most of them, including many Muslims. So they overtire themselves a lot for worldly things. And thus they are missing up their own life in this world first before the hereafter. So they are enjoying this world less, they are enjoying your families less, they are enjoying your, their positions less, they are enjoying your, their relationship less, they don't have time. They are running and running and running and running, then what? You understand? So this is a reminder, it doesn't mean be lazy and don't do, no, work. And actually do work, sincere and serious work, it's not a joke, no play. But there is no need to fight over it or, or have an anxiety or trouble, causing trouble to yourself or to other people. No need. No need. Take a break, take relaxation, enjoy this world and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us this reality actually. Seek with whatever you have the hereafter, but do not forget your share in this world. Enjoy this world. This is all the enjoyment in this world. Why did Allah Almighty create it? All of it. Why did Allah Almighty create it? For the believers. Allah Almighty says, Say, O Muhammad وسلم, to them who has forbidden the ornaments and enjoyment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in this world, say it is for the believers in this world. However, it is exclusive for them in the hereafter. So in this world, it's not exclusive to you. Anybody can enjoy it with you. Anybody can benefit from it. Not only you. But Allah Almighty initially created it for whom? Oh, yeah. For the believers. But he's not going to prevent any of his creation from benefit from that. That is why when Ibrahim alayhi salam made a dua to us, in our mind, you might think this is a beautiful dua. When he made dua, oh Allah Almighty, and give sustenance to those who follow you and believe in you. In Mecca, the people of Mecca. Give sustenance only to those who are believers and who are good and righteous people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I'm going to give also the disbelievers. Here, you want to prevent me from providing for my own creation? That is not God Almighty. He says, no, he says, no. And the disbeliever, I'll give them enjoyment for a short time in this world. Short time means in this world, because it's short. Then in the hereafter, it will be the accountabilities. So that is the concept of this. Don't worry. Everything is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not people. I'll tell you an incident that happened. I don't know the people involved, subhanAllah. So the, a head of a university, he was not on with, uh, good term with one of the teachers. And let us give him a, another name, uh, let's say Brother Ahmed for example. So he decided to fire him. And there is a notice to be given usually before two months or something, before the end of the year. Uh, that there will be no renewal and so on. So he told the secretary, write uh, the letter to Dr. Ahmed and so on. Wrote it, came, signed, gave it to him. They gave it to him. End of story. After t that was on a Thursday. On Sunday, Dr. Ahmed, but that is a different Dr. Ahmed, it was a real term, came to the professor and he says, Why did you fire me? So no, it wasn't you, it was another Ahmed. He says, no, here it is, this is my name. <laughs> the secretary typed the other Ahmed, subhanAllah, <laughs> not that one. 
Don't worry. This is a real life situation. It was the other one. He says, I'm not going to take it back. Sorry, I cannot. That's it. It's you, you. Next year, we'll see the other guy. <laughs> the concept, we have many such stories. I'm not going to waste your time with it. But this is part of real life. So this is a reminder. Now, after that comes another thing, which is also explaining to us this world. The other part of the dua, وَلَا يَنْفَعُ ذَا الْجَدِّ مِنْكَ الْجَدِّ and it does not benefit the one who possesses lots of wealth or luck, his wealth or luck, in front of you, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Means if he does not use his capacities and his wealth and abilities in things that benefit him in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of these things are not going to benefit him. Means Whatever you have, remind yourself to do something good that benefits you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do not worry about losing part of this world if it is going to distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why after every salah, you remind yourself. Because sadly, there are many people who are diverted away from the salah or distracted away from the salah because of their worldly positions or seeking this world. This is a reality. We are human beings. And sadly, some of them are distracted inside the salah itself. So while well, he is in the salah, standing in the salah, he's thinking about the world. Another big problem. And there is a beautiful reminder. Simply remember that whatever, whatever you are worrying about, whether it is a matter of family or wealth or health, whatever it is, you are already standing in front of the one who can solve it. Why would you worry about that? You are actually now. So do you distract yourself away from the person who can solve it for you? Doesn't make sense. Thinking that you want to help yourself, you're not going to help yourself this way. You're in the salah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the salah. He knows. So when Allah Almighty sees that you are sincere about it, Allah Almighty is going to solve it for you. No need to worry about it. Next after that is the beautiful uh, dhikr. That, uh, that are nicknamed al-baqiyat al-salihat the righteous thing that remains or the good things that remains subhanallah alhamdulillah wallahu akbar and the fourth is la ilaha illallah wahda wa la sharika lahu al-mulk wa alhamdu ala kulli shay'in qadir after every salah there are multiple ways to do it the shortest one the shortest one the easiest one to say subhanallah 10 times alhamdulillah 10 times allahu akbar 10 times the Messenger وسلم, says two things that if a Muslim does, anybody who is a Muslim who does it, Allah Almighty is going to admit him in paradise. So Full stop. They are very simple, very easy. However, most people don't do it. SubhanAllah. Many people are lazy. They don't do it. Saying SubhanAllah after every obligatory salah, SubhanAllah 10 times, Alhamdulillah 10 times, Allahu Akbar 10 times. Now, the Messenger وسلم, says these are 150 by count or by the tongue. 150. 10, 10, 10. This is 30, right? Why did he say 150? Because of the obligatory salah. Five obligatory salah. However, the Messenger وسلم, says in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your account they are 1,500. SubhanAllah. In the other narration, he mentions another dua to also make in the evening, and he says, so that will make it 2,500 reward. So who among you makes more than 2,500 or makes 2,500 sins every day? Means Allah Almighty, anybody who does it, he will sleep sin free, inshallah. We are talking about the minor sin. And thus, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's sin free, means he is going to be admitted in paradise. Very simple. Very beautiful kind of salah. When do you say it? You say it exclusively after the obligatory salah. Does it mean it is not going to benefit you if you say it another time? No, it's going to benefit you. But not necessarily this promise. You might not get this promise. Now, can you do more? Of course, you can do more. And that is why in the other narration, you say it 25 times, 25 times, 25 times, and then 25 times, La ilaha illallah, wahda la sharika la ilaha mulku la alhamdu ala kulli shayin qadir. The perfect form is to say it after every salah 33 times. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, 
والله اكبر and then one time لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وعلى كل شيء قدير what happens when you say it after every obligatory salah the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم says all his previous sins are going to be forgiven even if they were as many as or as much as the forms of the seas means between the previous salah and this salah all of it is forgiven very simple dhikr to make after every Burgess salah and it's not necessary to say it while you are sitting down if you need to leave you can still leave while doing it and continue saying it at any time also uh, reciting Ayatul Kursi the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says anyone who recites Ayatul Kursi after every obligatory salah uh, there will be nothing preventing him from being admitted in paradise except death nothing between him and paradise except dying when his soul passes from this world to the next world, inshallah, he will be in paradise. And then after that is the mu'awwidat, the three mu'awwidat, as mentioned by Uqba bin Amr radiallahu anhu, the Messenger sallallahu ordered me to say, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهَ أَحَدْ أَنْ قُلْ عَذْرَبِ الْفَلَقَ أَنْ قُلْ عَذْرَبِ النَّاسِ means the mu'awwidat, after every salah, means once after every salah, in the other narration, Fajr and Maghrib, three times after Fajr and Maghrib. This is a perfect form of protection. Protection for you from all harms. Seen and unseen, known and unknown. Complete. People are worried nowadays. Some of them are over uh, obsessed with, with the uh, evil eye and hasad and, and the jinn and I don't know what. All of these things. This is more than enough. Saying it more than enough is going to protect you as well. Final point we will conclude with it the link between the salah, the salah in Arabic language, salah means dua. Salah in Arabic means supplication. Like in English, pray, pray could be used for both for the salah as a prayer and for supplication and dua. This is similar to that. And there is a link between them. Allah Almighty said in the Holy Quran, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ When you have free time, then tire yourself in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No such thing as a free time. Because you're, you're doing business with Allah Almighty. This is an opportunity. Any free time is an opportunity. It's true. Do something that benefits you in this world and the hereafter. وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ And to your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will and wish for something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Present your need and your request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after finishing the ibadah and the salah, this is a beautiful time to make dua and supplication. So after mentioning the adhkar, which I've mentioned, make dua. Say your request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was mentioned by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Clearly, he was asked which dua is more heard by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means more likely to be uh, answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the Messenger وسلم, mentioned in the middle of the night and after the obligatory salat. So after finishing the obligatory salat and the adhkar, this is a beautiful time to make dua. Beautiful time. Make dua for anything that benefits you or benefits me, whatever you require. Among the dua that are narrated from the Messenger وسلم, is asking Allah Almighty for complete and comprehensive forgiveness. The first one after the salah, astaghfirullah, 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 you can do it. But there is a comprehensive one mentioned by the Messenger وسلم, that he used to do after the salah. Allahumma uh, li ma qaddamtu wa ma akhartu. Allah Almighty forgive for me whatever I uh, brought for, forward and whatever I delayed or make it late on and وما أسررت وما أعلنت whatever I, I, I done in secret and what I've done in public or in the open وما أسرفت and whatever I have exceeded excess or doing an excess in, in, in wrong things or so on and وما أنت أعلم به مني and whatever you know and you have more knowledge of than me you know better than me you are the one who brings forward and the one who delays or bring late la ilaha illa ant there is no god except you la ilaha illa ant beautiful dua for total forgiveness of everything you can do this dua as well as any dua that benefits you including your
your own need in this world and in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often and often uh, in the mornings and in the evenings in the in secret and in open. Ameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.